Hi everyone, it's Cindy Wellyou with the Welcome Home team at Keller Williams Realty Elite. And right now I'm gonna talk about the number one mistake home sellers make when going to sell their home, and that is that they price it incorrectly. So most of the time, if you don't price correctly from the start or make an adjustment quick enough, if the market shifts or changes, you're gonna end up chasing the market is what I like to say. So you're gonna have where you price reduce, price reduce, price reduce, but you stay longer on the market, a reputation can build and buyers might start asking themselves either what's wrong with the property, why has no one wanted the property? And sometimes they don't even give the home consideration because they don't perceive the value is there just by looking at the information online. So if you price right from the start, you'll end up most likely nine times out of 10 netting more than if you would have priced incorrectly. Um, you're also going to save yourself a lot of frustration, um, disappointment, and regret because we have seen that before as well. So some of the excuses uh, or reasons that you give yourself to price higher than maybe where the market value and the range is coming in is that you told your real estate agent, this is the price I want, and they just agreed to it right away, even if it was outside of the data or the information they showed you. Please keep in mind, this might be an inexperienced realtor or someone that is just wanting your business so badly, they're not being honest and upfront with you on that. But that is um, one of the reasons that we hear a lot, especially from those that have maybe expired or failed to sell with someone else. They're like, well, they told me I could get that price. Um, but if the data isn't there to support it, it's very unlikely. So that's one of the reasons. Um, another is that you wanna leave some room for negotiating. So I heard this as well. Sometimes though, leaving that room for negotiating, you don't have anything to negotiate. If you're priced out of the market, you most likely will not get an offer. And to negotiate, you have to have an offer. So a lot of times if you price too high, you're not even getting um, an offer to negotiate. Uh, let's try higher because if the buyer likes it, they'll just offer less. So 20 years ago when I got into the business, that might have held true. You did see that in some cases, but we don't see it now. If you are priced high, buyers are just skipping over you. They are looking and they're doing their homework online, they're educating themselves, and they're figuring out where prices are. And when your price is too high and they perceive the value, they'll either think in their mind that you're unrealistic, um, they'll overpay, and they don't even look at your property. So please try to keep that in mind as well. Or um, my neighbor sold for X and my house is way nicer than them. We all are biased to our own homes. Guilty as charged. I would say too, I'm like, oh, I have to have nicer, right? Because this is how I like it. But you know, you have to compare apples to apples. Um, this happens a lot. You might say, oh, my neighbor sold for this, but my house is so much nicer. Um, so I think I need to ask $20,000 more. Well, you have to look at everything. If that home is exactly the same floor plan, exactly the same kind of finishes, um, but maybe you added some more outdoor spaces or something, that might be a true statement. But if your home is nicer in your opinion, only because of what you like as finishes versus what the general market might think as more of an upgrade, that could be different. Or if your home is nicer and has nicer upgrades, but maybe it has one less bedroom or a thousand square feet less or a two car garage versus a three car garage. So all of those have to be taken into consideration as well. Speaking of considerations, so I'm gonna look at my notes to make sure I don't miss any of this, but um, a lot of the wrong information is what's considered when home sellers go to price. Uh, They'll listen to what their neighbors, uh, their family, and their friends tell them they should do. 
Just please keep in mind that your neighbors, of course, want you to get the highest price possible because it helps their value. And your friends and your family love you. So of course they want you to get the highest price there is, but they won't necessarily have all the data or know where the current market is. Um, you're listening to the news. The 10 o'clock news at night is saying, oh my gosh, home prices are soaring and properties are flying off the market. Sometimes that is true. Sometimes it's 30 day old data that they're using. Um, or its specific areas are price points. And you really need to ask a local professional and do your homework and make sure that your property fits into that criteria. Uh, Zillow, my estimate says I'm worth this. Uh, Zillow is a, of course, national um, website that so many consumers go and look at. Their estimate is based on algorithms that they have internally, but they themselves will admit that they are eight to 10% or even higher um, off of their values in a lot of markets. So please keep that in mind. They only have the sales data um, versus actually seeing the property and having hands-on knowledge. Now, I will say if a property has sold every three to five years consistently for 20 years, that value is that estimate's probably gonna be pretty close because they're watching the trends and the sales prices. But if a homeowner has been in their house for 20 plus years, um, if, it's been, if they built new construction, most likely that estimate is going to be off. So again, just uh, look to a local professional to help you navigate all of that. Um, and oh, and the other wrong information is kind of like what I talked about with uh, the neighbor's house. You want to compare apples to apples. You can't compare um, your 4,000 square foot two story to the 1,500 square foot um, rambler on the lake or on the corner. It's um, they're not just not apples to apples. And you also want to try to keep your comparables as close as possible to your property because appraisers always want to go close first and then they'll start going farther out to find similar comparables. Um, online valuations, I love this. So people are like, can I go put my address in? And um, the valuation that it gives me, is that accurate? Well, the answer is yes, no, maybe. Um, it could be, but they're all done different. They all have different um, data algorithms to figure that out. Some give a set market price, some give a range. There's a good chance when there's a range or somewhere in there, you just don't know where, um, but they have very limited data to go on. Again, they might be pulling from past sales, uh, but they might also just be pulling bedrooms, baths, square footage, which is apples to apples, right? Except they can't see what your upgrades are. So if you've switched out, um, all of your countertops to quartz from laminate and you've added hardwood floors and you finished your you know, basement with a big wet bar and um, a custom fireplace, they're not going to know that and that's not gonna be considered in there. So although some might be accurate and it does give you somewhat of an idea, it's still best to talk to a local professional to get the most accurate valuation that you can. Um, so the correct information for pricing uh, is to look at neighborhood and area comparables uh, that are most like your property. And what does that mean? What do people look at when it comes to values? Appraisers, realtors, um, all the reports that you get, location, of course. Um, you're not going to compare a home in Minneapolis to a home in St. Paul two different locations. You are not going to compare um, a property that might be on a double lane highway to one in the country off a gravel road on acreage, right? So location is going to be taken into consideration. You wanna have the comparables the same. Uh, lot features. Um, if you're right next to an industrial factory, that might go into consideration um, versus a green park, um, walking trail. Um, if you're on the lake, it's going to be a different comparable than if you're on a golf course. Uh, you might have a pool, you might not. And in Minnesota, that's a totally different subject, but 
uh, that not, might not necessarily be a good thing and it might be a great thing. So just always keeping those things in mind. Uh, maybe you have a deck and a patio and a comparable does not, right? Appraiser is gonna try to look at others first and that's what you hope for because once they have to start making adjustments, um, it's more of an opinion and greater chance of maybe an appraisal um, not coming in where it needs to. Uh, so again, they look at square footage, number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the year built, uh, the style of the home. You're not gonna compare a three level split home with a rambler, a condo with a two story. Um, so you also have to look at the style of the home. Uh, a lot of people believe that if they put a new roof on, uh, that increases their value. Yes and no. <laughs> so maintenance items, big ticket maintenance items, um, increase your saleability. Uh, they are going to appeal a lot more to buyers. That is expenses that they're not going to have to incur when they move in. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily add to the value of the property um, because maintenance items are expected. Uh, you're expected to have a good roof, right? You're expected to have um, working furnace and working air conditioner. Um, those things are expected versus say, like the example I used before, laminate countertops versus quartz or granite. That's an upgrade. Roof, roof, not necessarily. Um, I know an example I like to use on this, even though it's not quite the same, but if you had to dig a new well, let's say you had to dig a new well, and your neighbor had to dig a new well, you had to drill down 50 feet further than your neighbor. So it costs you $10,000 more for your well versus theirs. That does not increase your value $10,000. Um, so if you put on a, you chose to put a cedar shake roof on, right, um, for 40,000, 50,000, but your neighbor went and put one on for 30 to 35. I, both are new roofs. Um, one buyer might prefer a cedar shake roof, another may not. So you run into that as well. But just keep in mind, saleability items usually will get you a higher price because they're gonna to appeal to more buyers, they're gonna get you more attention, and they're going to usually net you a higher offer. But you won't necessarily be, be pricey for that. I know it's kind of confusing. Um, but big ticket items and maintenance items uh, increase the saleability, as does uh, your cleansiness, your design, um, staging, those kind of things. The style uh, that you've put into the house, those can all affect the saleability. Um, so now I want to get into... Oh, list price versus sale price too. A lot of people don't understand that. Um, and it's one of the things you do want to look at as well. So say every house uh, in your direct area sold for 98% of their list price. That would mean if it was priced at 100,000, on average, they all sold for 98,000. So when you are pricing your property, you do want to look at that. If it's very steady, it's easy, right? If they're selling drastically lower, so if the sale prices are drastically lower than the list prices, if you get closer to what that sale price was, right, and not try to match those list prices, you're most likely going to have a faster sale. So that's just something to consider as well. You also want to look at the market trends or you have your local professional do it. So we'll pull the reports um, say you're in uh, Eden Prairie. So if you're looking at comparable sales, we usually go back six months, which is what appraisers will do. But that is six months ago. And in Minnesota, as we all know, wonderful weather coming up soon, winter. If you were to be pricing your home in March, a lot of your comparables are when it's a slower uh, time of year, longer market time. 
because they were sold in November, December, January, right? So you want to watch the trends and see how the sale prices have either appreciated or depreciated in that time and take that into account as well. Uh, another report that we love showing our sellers is the showing activity report. And this is not the showings for your property because this is before you even go in the market. We are going to pull in your price range um, what activities happen in the last 30, 60, and 90 days for showings. Where this comes in handy, um, let's say you can't decide if you want to price at $199 or $205. The same, those are two different price points um, and two different price brackets, especially online. If you're searching on Zillow, you might go 200 to 225 or you might go 175 to 200, right? So you could be in two different price brackets. So we look at the showing activity and we can see how many showings there have been in each of the price ranges. So if there have been say 30 showings in the last 30 days, at the 200 to 210,000, but there's only been one showing in the 190 to 200, I'm probably gonna advise you, you could do the 205 because there's more activity right now. Now, if 90 days ago, that was the case, but then in 30 days they swapped, that would be different. Then maybe you'd wanna do the 199 because that's where the showing activity is. So it's really important to watch where the active buyers are in the market right now to make sure that you're going to be seen by them. Um, and when it comes to price adjustments, people are like, what does that mean? Well, sometimes the market can shift drastically. Um, although unlikely right now, it always could happen to where I don't want to say the stock market or something happens and it affects housing and all of a sudden um, prices start going down. Well, you don't want to wait to adjust your price. You want to get that done immediately. You want to have your real estate professional pull all the market data, sit down um, and get ahead of it because you don't want to be chasing it. When it comes to that, um, oh, with all of that said, it's your castle, it's your home. So where to price it is ultimately your decision. But if you follow these considerations, you have the best opportunity to get the absolute highest price. And remember, I always like to tell people, this is a business transaction, even though it's really hard sometimes to look at it that way. It's one of the largest financial sales a person will usually make in their lifetime. A home sale is very big. So you want to make sure you're looking at the numbers and the data and trying to emotionally detach as much as possible. So I hope this was helpful, but feel free to reach out to us anytime with any of your questions. And we're here as a real estate resource for you. Thanks, have a great day.